Yeah, I used to grow a big fucking Like a Chad beard. Nichols beard. <laughs> I tried to be the dye. Dude, this was dope. <laughs> I think he looks it, way better. You just better have to make it through the itchy phase. And it turns gray. Who cares? Oh, then you can dye it. It's even better, dude. Yeah. I think it is. More badass. My, Salt and pepper. Dude, once you got through the... Like, for me, like I'm, I'm way past that like yeah, annoying stage, and now I don't yeah. mind it. The one I don't like is it just dude i haven't like learned how to like eat yet with it i was gonna say do, does food get stuck in it and like you yes. just have like savory it. goodness chips, it just like like it just collects stuck. yeah <laughs> do you have to like brush it out or something like i, I like, just usually wash it <laughs> <laughs> i just go to the sink and just wash my face um <laughs> isn't like the post-sex thing like oh my god oh it's all See, fucked up it's yeah. just like oh, oh my god and my seat. Well, and then so i can't that, ever get it dude then you would never yeah. be clean after that it it really feels like you like for me like i really feel like i can't like get no all of it. <laughs> i'm like dude no matter what i do i'm like it's oh, just like, saturated it's, it's just yeah wow. tasting it's it for a week it for later. yeah it's a flavor saver <laughs> that's great all right we should have had that on the show it's recording oh, oh that fuck was, oh, <laughs> that's a great way to start <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> oh, wow. And Her. this is Heather. Welcome, yeah. Heather. Oh, by the way, your headphones. Sausage party with Heather. Oh, that's yeah. fucking awesome. All right. You know, thing in tradition. Fuck yeah, dude. Do, do, do the thing. What's now? What's going on? You're about to find out. All right. <laughs> we need to have. Is it a clapper? Basically, no, we we need that's to have the guest do it. For now on, they clap three times. Oh, that's a good idea. Start over again, like, Heather. Fuck am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> Heather, clap three times. Me? Yep. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Now I'm probably going to line up my clap with her claps and it'll all be fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> no more of that. You hit record, right? I did. All right. On that one too? Yep. Okay. Okay, welcome <laughs> to the O'Malley's Gym Podcast number three. Our guest today is Heather Munson. Hello. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I sure know. A little hobbit back there. Yeah, you guys are a little bit far away. Yeah. I know. From your mic. All right, so we're going to start with the big gym news on this one. We just had Jake Hammaker compete at the Miami Nationals. Well, it's Orlando Nationals. It's so weird. This year. This weekend. And he placed 11th out of, uh, it was around 30 guys. Mm-hmm. Somewhere around mm-hmm. there. Yeah. And it was a... Pretty quality class, so he did real good for his first ever national show. Big deep class. He was middle of the second lineup, right? For second call out. That would put him in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that was a really competitive year this year. I, I honestly thought it was not going to be that way. Like, I thought it was going to be COVID. Trash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but it, <laughs> there was the, like the heavies and the supers, that was. There's some monsters. And the guy that won his class won the overall. Yeah. And looked like a freak. Mm-hmm. The dude that's like Tom Platt's like of this century. Yeah. I, I like I was telling you guys when you guys were posting pictures that day, I loved how like polished he was. Like it, to me, it felt like it was like a uh, like a '90s look. I know I talk about that all the time, but I, I loved how like he was just real, just crisp, nice lines. And it was, he was a complete body uh, Absolutely, sure. yeah. He yeah. earned it. Yeah, well, that was good for Jake. He. Had a decent showing in a national level show, so now he's feet are wet and he's ready to go. Mm-hmm. Congrats, Jake. Yeah, congrats. congrats. Really, oh, that's really awesome. Good. The next one's going to be better. Oh, yeah. The first one's the worst. <laughs> I got fucking cleaned up. <laughs> <laughs> Bad, <laughs> dude. It was never, it's never, um, it's, you just never know until you get there and you see these people in person. It's like when you're walking around backstage, you're like, what? Like, you're not just, you're competing against people that are living and breathing it and have the genetic potential plus some. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you just don't ever see that until you go to one of those shows and you're like, holy shit. Like, I have got to do a lot more work. Good stuff, though. Yep. All right, so let's meet our guest, Heather. So, Heather Munson, um, what do you guys want me to talk about? How awesome I am, all that good stuff. Basically, you could do that. Yeah, basically, just talk about myself. Um, I'm national level competitor in women's bodybuilding. Um, I'm a full time mom of two kids, single mom, um, full time career in medical sales. Um, I'm O'Malley's gym member, proud of it. Yeah. Natural redhead, proud of that. Yeah. Hobbit, 
proud of that. <laughs> I'm a unicorn, all the fun stuff. Um, yeah, I've been bodybuilding now for like 15 years. Love it. Why did you choose bodybuilding? Um, I was a collegiate softball player at Oregon. And I was a power lifter, so I was just kind of a refrigerator, like no shape to me. I was just like a brick house. And I was approached by three male bodybuilders in the gym. And they were like, dude, your legs are freaking awesome. And they got me into it after I graduated. It was my next sport. So you've been competing for 15 years? How many years have you been? So I stage? started competing in 2007, and then I took a break and was a mom. Did my mom stuff and was you know kind of dedicated to that, but I always still lived the lifestyle. And then got back into competing pretty seriously in 2014. Okay. Um, can give us kind of like the run of like your show experience. Like how many shows have you done? How many years were you competing locally? Like, you know, what shows have you won? Like let's... Yeah. So um, I've competed locally eight times now. So I, I started out by doing Vancouver Naturals and Oregon State. Those were my two first shows. And then I took a break and then I got back into... The fall shows, they did Seven Feathers, Northwest Championships, I think it's called. And then um, did that like two years in a row, those same shows. And then I went national after that. How many national shows have you done now? Three. Okay. And how did you do at those shows? So the first one, and this kind of relates back to what we were talking about, like the first national show was nationals in Miami. And my heavyweight bodybuilding class, I like peed myself when I was backstage these <laughs> yeah. girls were huge yeah and I'm like a hobbit like I'm like five two and a half I'm pretty stacked for five two and a half but I'm like looking at these girls like shit yeah. and <laughs> these are big girls they were like 200 like 200 pounds and I was like okay but I got third it was like 10 girls in my class which is a pretty big number for women's bodybuilding nationally Definitely. <laughs> that's, yeah that's a good number yeah and um I was, you know, that was my first experience and I was pretty pumped that I did so well and then came back the next year, got second at nationals again. And then this last year did Miss International, got third. So. And you were preparing for Orlando this year and tell us about how COVID railroad. Okay. Let's, let's, let's start from the beginning though. It wasn't, I wasn't prepared or wasn't preparing ultimately for nationals. Ultimately I was starting by doing USA's in July in Vegas originally so you started to prep like being January. Of yeah. Wow. Okay. So let's just let's just be real for a second. I feel second. like there's a lot of people that have this story <laughs> right now. People are gonna love to hear that. Do you know cause... how many people were in prep, reversed, went into off season or mini off season, and went back into prep? Yeah. To compete this fall. So. Not me. I have to take the whole year, apparently. Dude, mad kudos to anybody who actually competed this year. Yeah. Like, like whether you won or lost, like, good God, Attaboy. what a fucked up year to compete. I know. I didn't do it because of that. <laughs> Fuck that. I, like, I, I saw the, the COVID restrictions. I was like, yeah, I'm not kidding. Yeah, year. dude. Like, there's no way that I'm sticking <laughs> yeah. to any type of plan unless yeah. I know for a fucking fact. It's too time sensitive. It's, yeah. It, mm-hmm. it so, really yeah, that was the plan. Originally, USA's. Then we're like, meh. You know, maybe we can do North Americans. Maybe COVID will be fine by then. No. Then Miss International, which was in October. Um, And then we finally were like, let's just do nationals. And then then I was even going to try to do USA's. I'm really glad that he was like, no, I'm reversing you. You've been dieting since January. You're good. Because they just moved USA's from Vegas now to Phoenix two and a half weeks out. I didn't know that. Wait, they did? Just announced it. From Vegas to Phoenix. Wow, so know. everybody has to change their stuff. Oh, God. Can you imagine that stress level? No. no Two and a half no. weeks out? No. <laughs> That's terrible. Cortisol. Anybody, any, and I'm a water buffalo, so I would have just, it would have been done. Yeah. And Shelby was like, no. So no. this is your, so let's talk about that. So who who did you work with in the past for your shows, and when? how long have you been working with Shelby? Is it okay if I take these off? Yeah. Okay. It's like really distracting. Um. So... <laughs> So from the beginning, who I started with, so I started working with Noel for a hot minute. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> so how long did you work with Noel? No, that was just like ass season, like 12 weeks. Oh, okay. um, and then I actually worked with Erica Blockman, which she was amazing. Erica's a super sweet girl. She's awesome. And she was actually working with Shelby at the time. So I think that she really gathered a lot of her knowledge from him. And that's part of the reason I was like, he's he's going to be the coach I work with. Um, and I've worked with like Alex Whitaker a little bit. He's a good dude. Um, and 
you know, I've just really, like, as soon as I started working with Shelby, it was like, okay, now yeah. we're good. So, well, Shelby, of all the coaches in the world, there's a handful that I have respect for. Exactly. And Shelby's one of them. Yeah, yes. that dude so does some good work. Tell us the big difference you see now that you're working with Shelby. Well, and I'm also going to, I'm going to break down because I want to talk about Blue, too. So, because I, I actually approached Blue um, last year sometime. And was like, hey, you know, how would you feel about coaching me? And he was like straight up. He was like, I would love to work with you, but Shelby will do better with you. Shelby's really good with girls. So I appreciate that. Um, I think that's awesome when, yeah, when a coach yeah, can, yeah. when a coach is. They just know their re- place. Yeah, they, and they're real about like, mm-hmm. like, especially somebody. It just, it's, it's nice to see somebody that has a little bit of integrity out there and isn't just trying to take your money because that shit gets real old, too. Well, and I think that's what separates good coaches. Mm. Like, they want what is best for the athlete. Absolutely. You know, and he he's awesome. I absolutely love Blue. Obviously, I've known him for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, respect him. He's so knowledgeable. And so when he told me that, I was like, cool. You know, I feel, I feel like that's the direction I need to go. And Shelby, he's just extremely analytical. He studies his athletes. He listens to you, which is key. You know, this is the experience I have. This is what I know about myself. Like, for instance, I can't eat carbs. Let's be real. Like, I can be all season without carbs, and I'm fine. Like, they just don't. My insulin receptors are just handy tarted. They don't do anything with carbs. And I told him that, and he was like, cool. He played around with them a little bit, and then immediately went to kind of a cyclical keto with me. I did so well. Started getting lean really fast. Um, he's also very respectful of like gear. Cause I was like, this is where I'm at. You know, I'm, I'm very conservative. This is what I'm okay with. This is what I'm not okay with. He was so great about that. So that's it's, nice too. Cause yeah. there is a lot of coaches that they don't just, want to they, listen. They do not give a shit. Like yeah, you're going to take what I'm going to, what I tell you, you're going to eat what I tell you mm-hmm. and what, just what I say me. goes. And just it's like, me. Oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> so, especially with something like that, that does have yeah. effects on people. Well, and, and girls, you know, we're competitive, you know, well, guys, obviously we're all competitive, but so a lot of times they'll be like, whatever, just, you know, put me on whatever. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that he was like, no, no, we don't need to do that. You know, I'll diet you harder or make you do more cardio, whatever happens to be. I totally respect that. So mad respect. Yeah. He's awesome. And he's, he's a man of short, like short words. He's, he'll give me a little brief response and email. That's it. So if you're high maintenance, probably, but you shouldn't be. (laughs) A lot of people are. Yeah, at this level, you should just suck it up, and you should just listen to your coach. Yeah, you shouldn't. Like, I feel like if you're competing at a national level, you shouldn't need the like bottom padding. Like, you, no. you just need to be told what to do and, and be the robot and no. just fucking do the work. Yeah. So he's great with that. And like every time something came up, obviously this is so time sensitive. This sport. And so I was like, hey man, like COVID, awesome. He's like, it's all right. You know, he'd make adjustments. We'd roll with it. New game plan. Just really cool, dude. Did he do anything with your training at all? No. You you have the option of having him work with your training. And sometimes he would be like, I need you to do this just to bring up your back. Or I need you Mm -hmm. to do this. But he would never... He left that to me, which is totally fine. So... Yeah. I I saw you a couple months ago. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, this is... This is... Like, whatever she's doing this year is definitely... A difference, yeah. Because I mean, I I know that like in your past, like the bringing in that like condition has always kind of been the, yeah, the, the stubborn part of your mm-hmm. your process. And I was like, okay, like I don't know, I didn't know you were working with a new coach. I just I could see it that mm-hmm. it was changing. So that's that's cool to know that he was. Oh no, like he's freaking amazing, and like I said, he's no joke. Like he knows his stuff, and he's just very calculated. He pays attention to your body, and made the difference for me. So. Does yeah. he stick to the, for food, does he stick to, like, the bodybuilder basic foods? Yes. Yes. He's very simple. And, like, for instance, if it's working, he won't change anything, mm-hmm. which drives me nuts with coaches when they feel like they have to change yeah. something. <laughs> I'm like, stop. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Which is good because most of your clients want changes. And like, yeah. No, you yeah. boring. Yeah. No, I'm, and I don't even care. I'm like, I'll eat the same damn shit over and over. I'm good. So... Yeah, he's he was like no changes, keep rolling, you're doing awesome. So, yeah. How, so how long have you been working with him? Since December. And obviously, I'm assuming you're going to yeah. continue working yeah. with him. So We're reversing right now. So what is your um remind me we're going to come back to that cuz that was one of our questions so we're yes. going to talk about that. Yes. Um what what's your what's your plans now? You have are you going to Yeah. go to 
I don't even know where to say. Like people are going to be, are you going to do nationals again next year? <laughs> <laughs> what show is it? Yeah. yeah I, it's so hard to plan. So right yeah, now. no, our plan now, um, which ultimately like the main show I really wanted to compete in, um, was Miss International because it's Chicago pro too. And if you go, if you go pro Friday, in the amateur, you can do the pro show the next day. Oh, that's, oh, wow. that's so, pretty cool. Not yeah. to mention, if you take the overall at that show, you get an invite to Rising Phoenix. So you might as well. That's the show to do. That's oh, pretty wow. cool. Yeah, because it's a Wings of Strength show, and I'm one of the ambassadors, and so it's just it's a cool show anyways. And you're at Chicago Pro, dude. Yeah, that's Like, it's freaking... To see that in person, it's crazy. What... Um, what, what, is, what do you mean by ambassador? I don't know. Exactly. So Wings of Strength is like... Um, they're the big organization that came through with Jake Woods, who now owns the Olympia. Right. Um, when women's bodybuilding faded out of the Olympia, Wings of Strength kind of came through and like took all the women. Set a new platform. Yeah, yeah. Created this whole environment. I think they started out with like three or four show- shows. And then they've now, I think Wings of Strength has like 10 shows. All throughout, some are national, some are pro. A lot of them are pro, but it was it was so that we had venues, so that we were able to compete as female bodybuilders because we lost, and that's the reason Rising Phoenix um, came through was because that was our Olympia. You actually make more money at that than you do the Olympia. <laughs> I think the first place person gets fifty grand and a fifty thousand no a hundred thousand dollar Hellcat. Oh wow! What? Yeah. So. I don't even know. I don't even know what the women were making. I know, like, I only pay attention to the bodybuilding it's and what like they make. It's not much. It's, well, yeah. Yeah. For the yeah, Olympia, it's minimal. ten grand yeah. to be so the best female bodybuilder in the world. That is fucking. That I don't know what it is less. this year. I don't, I don't know what it is this year now. Now that they brought it back, but Rising Phoenix is still. And the the males make what like what the... five hundred four hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and put the two twelves. <laughs> Yeah, that, isn't that that's, yeah, that's, that's so, so crazy. Crazy. It's like yeah, twenty grand. Sad. That's crazy that yeah. the gap is so big. I mean, I know that like those guys bring. bring Think about numbers, it though. The two twelve like, have that, to bring in the conditioning like crazy. Dude, the two twelve class is like one of my favorite classes to watch. It's one I of my two that. because I love that class. Super competitive and they're so dialed. Yeah, like it's nuts. Well, yeah. almost restricted too because they can't go past that right. class. Well, I might be open, so you can have. Whoever just comes in sloppy, but like 212, you have to come in dark. You have to be in shape. Well, Flex Lewis had to suffer down to get Mm -hmm. under 212. Like, that's the reason he wanted to go to the open. And I was actually looking forward to see what he could do in the open. Um, I was heartbroken. No, I was super sad. I'm sorry, Tim. When he got out of it. Yeah. Yeah. But I heard Hottie's coming. (gasps) That was going to be my question. Oh, I love Hottie. He's so good. Is he doing open or is he doing uh, open? Yeah, he's open because he did open last year. Killed it. Yeah. He always seems to like flip-flop, though. But last yeah. year he did open was while spending most of the year. Mm-hmm. Now he's, he's in 212 yeah. range. Now he's, now he's just, just going. Okay. Yeah, he's going balls in. Yeah. <clears throat> That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, so you what did you say you do for a living again? Medical sales. Medical sales. Mm-hmm. How'd you get into that? So I was a personal trainer, like in my twenties, um, and like fitness manager, all that stuff. I think we all do that at some yeah, point. <laughs> definitely, we all do that, um, which was fun and everything. But it's definitely just like a beginner position. Um, and one of my clients was in medical sales and was just balling. And I was like, "How the hell do you do that?" And she's like, "Oh, you know, the interview process is kind of crazy. Got to have this. Got to have that." And so I just started researching, and I was like, I'm going to fucking do this. And it was like, the perks are crazy. Um, so yeah, I went through the process, kind of started entry level into it and then been in it ever since. Yeah. I think that, um, we were kind of talking about this a bef- little bit before we got started, but just the importance of having a good career and foundation, which I never had when I was competing because I was mm-hmm. doing the personal trainer thing, just scraping by trying to make it's it. It's so and, hard. Um, so maybe you can kind of yeah. give give some insight as to like yeah. like how <laughs> how that makes your life easier because yeah. I see a lot of um, people out there and I just I just think it's so fucking badass when you see people who are competitors that mm-hmm. have a good career. Yeah. Um you know, we talk me and Monty talk about it all the time. He's got a really good job too mm-hmm. and I think I, you know, what do you how does that make your life easier? Well, for one, I think that's the most commonly mistaken thing. Agreed. When <laughs> when competitor and that's part of the reason I think we should do 
some sort of bodybuilding like workshop or something at the gym at some point to have like realistic expectations of what's going to happen, the suffering that's involved, the money that's involved, the time, the sacrifice, relationships, all that stuff. But when it comes to just the money, breaking down how much costs food, um, travel, um, gear, anything that's involved in it, tanning, registration, travel, anything, people don't. It's like I have so many clients that want to compete and then they get going into it and they're like, well, I can't afford that. (laughs) So like, and yes, of course we all started somewhere. Like for me, I wasn't always like making the money I do, but that's part of the reason I made that shift is because I want to be able to not have the stress of where is this going to come from? How am I going to travel? How am I going to, obviously I lost a lot of money not being able to go to nationals, but I'm like, meh. That's how it goes. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, imagine if you were still. Oh yeah. No, no, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Fuck, I'm gonna have to pick up like. Now I'm. Clients. I'm gonna get an OnlyFans. <laughs> OnlyFans, here I come. Yeah. 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 Well, and I think that's that's part of the thing is, for me, I have children too, and I'm a single mom. Like, and I do it all on my own, and I'm like, dude, I have to, if I want to have any sort of way of doing this, I have to be able to make some good money. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Absolutely. It's an expensive sport. It's a very expensive sport. Oh, my God. And it's just, it's it's one of the most, like, you're going to sacrifice a lot to do you're this. At a, you're at a big disadvantage if you are worrying about paying for your hotel. Completely. Dude, I, yeah. Anytime I talk to young bodybuilders, I tell them that's, like, what my biggest mistake back when I was competing is, like, dude, I was scraping by. And I, like, I chose to to support it in a way that ended up getting me in a lot of trouble. Mm-hmm. And my biggest regret, I love I love my career now. Mm-hmm. And um, I my, my only regret about my career is that I didn't do it 10 years ago mm-hmm. because I'd be sitting in an office somewhere, like, you know, doing things that were a lot easier on my body. But I, I still love what I do. But I just, I wish that I'd had this career back when I was competing because so many of my worries would have went away. Oh, <laughs> when completely. I, when I got my career... I took six years off bodybuilding because it involved an apprenticeship school after yep. too. So I just knew, like, well, this is more important. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I'll pick, it, I'll pick up the bodybuilding when I'm done with this. Well, right. it's the same thing. Like, when I got started in it, I that was the, the gap. It was I was a mom, and I was hustling to make sure this career really took off and that I could I could do it. Right. So. And, and now you do train... Like I coach. more for like fun. Yeah, like, I coach yeah. on the side just because I love it. That's and the way to do it. <laughs> let's be honest. I fucking hate terrible coaches. Mm. I, I like when I see these women, especially that come up to me and they, their hormones are all jacked and they, they're just a mess. And it's because, you know, they were with coaches that didn't know what they were doing and relying heavily on gear, didn't know what to do with their diet, gave them a cookie cutter diet or whatever it happened to be. So that's the reason I'm involved in coaching and same thing with like posing and stuff like that. It's like, yeah. I just love it. How many how we utilize you for our posing classes? Yeah. Yep. I do all divisions except men's physique. I can't do men's physique. I look yeah. a, like a weird <laughs> hobbit thing trying to do men's physique. I, I can't, can't do it. I can't coach it for shit either. I'll well, I think bodybuilders, I think we just look funny. We're yeah. too damn big and we're like, okay. Like, it's like when Antoine did that joke one where he showed up like at, uh, for guest posing and board charts. Do you guys remember that? Antoine? I didn't. Uh, oh, this is like last year, I think. Antoine. I don't remember how to say his last name, but it's that... Uh, Antoine Valet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he showed up and people were like all yeah. pissed off. A lot of the board short people were pissed off because oh, he's yeah. like making a they joke get about better. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and like I can do bikini, I can do wellness, I can do, and people always laugh because they don't think that a female bodybuilder is going to, and I'm like, dude. Move femininely. I was like, I can rock this. You have no idea. Yeah. It's so much fun. But no, you are a good bikini coach. Yeah. Right? It's, <laughs> well, I'm like one of the only bikini posing coaches around. Yeah. Like, people just don't do it. How many people are you coaching for competition right now? Not any right now because everybody bailed. That's true. And, I mean, just having the honest conversations that I didn't want to keep people in prep when there was so much uncertainty. And it's just, like I said, it's just such a time-sensitive sport. You don't want to – I care more about their long-term. Right. Mm -hmm. So I have a beast page. Some of you guys probably saw her on, like – She's a female oh, body. Page, yeah. You know? So yeah. when I first, her hormones were all over the place when I first started with her. Um, she was super open, open about it. Same Wait, thing. you're talking about the, the little tattooed girl, right? She's not little. Well, they're shorter, right? I mean, they're all short. Yeah, yeah we're all short. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, she's not little. I don't know. But she's the one that has like a sleeve tattoo, right? Yes. Okay. She recently got like 17 tattoos. Like all, she's, 
she's 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 came to she's came to our gym before, right? No, she's in Idaho. Oh, okay. You, I'll show you pictures of her. Okay, I'm thinking yeah. of a different girl. She's she's impressive. She will go pro like immediately. She will go pro. Awesome. Yeah, but um, I've been working with her for a couple of years, and it was part of the reason I got into it was because I was seeing this happen so much. Like, yeah, let's so, get pictures of her and, and load her up. I'm going to just find it for you guys. We should throw her up on the shot. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. As well. Paige Dumar. Do she's, a cutaway. She's freaking crazy. Um, but anyways, yeah, so she's another one. Like, she will go pro, like, immediately. And... What does she compete in? Bodybuilding. Bodybuilding. Oh, yeah. nice. I'm, I miss female bodybuilding. I'm glad that, like, it's come, it's they took a certain. fucking stand... Oh my god! <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, that's that than I am. <laughs> she's yeah, she's no joke. Yeah, she is no joke. Like, yeah, and she's damn. five three. Oh damn! Yeah, that's, so she's, I, she's I love seeing kill. female bodybuilding kind of rising back up a little bit. Like, I, like when we started, it was <clears throat> like figure and bodybuilding, and mm-hmm. that was it. Female bodybuilding. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's it's coming back to the roots, and I I really, you know, when they removed it from the Olympia, obviously it was heartbreaking and I think but it was necessary in a sense there was it needed to have a hard reset like being as competitive as we are we started the women started getting crazy like it started getting crazy levels I mean Iris Kyle she's she's nuts man yeah and she was gonna keep winning there's nobody that can and I'll be excited to see what she looks like this year so but yeah yeah, I think it was good that we just had to figure it out and kind of bring it back to where it started. Yeah, sometimes you don't realize how much you miss something until it's mm-hmm. gone. So I think sometimes those types of things are good. They're like, oh, wait, maybe that's not the direction that mm-hmm. we wanted to go. A lot of women's physique girls are now trying to transition because it's it's honestly, it's the bread and butter. Bodybuilding is where it's at. Yep. It's just the cool division. Yep. I'm always more entertained by the entertained by the more extreme. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think For we sure. all are. Yeah, like, it's impressive. If you're really a fan of bodybuilding, you like... The freaks yeah. and shit like that. Yeah. It's That's so impressive. We, yeah. yeah, I think like uh, men's physique, women's bikini, things like that. It pays for the shows, but people want to see. That's the reason they the space out <laughs> the bodybuilding so annoyingly. Yeah. I, I just don't really like particularly love, and it's not to say that I don't respect the competitors because I do. Mm-hmm. I respect all the classes, but. And I think I even mentioned this on our first episode, but I just don't really like the idea of shoving people in windows. Like you have height mm-hmm. restrictions and weight restrictions mm-hmm. and you can't be too soft. You can't be too hard. You can't be too big. You can't be too little. So they just shove everybody into this window and then you have 50 people up there that kind of look the same and nothing's really like standing that. out. And then you're getting into things like, um, you know, oh, I really liked their uh, makeup and their, their, their hair. hair. It's like, oh, sh- that like, suit color was, that, was so phenomenal with it's, her skin. It, it's it completely so like taking away like what I like love about the sport. I'm mm-hmm. like, uh, it's just it, it, it's just not entertaining for me. I, no, I agree. Unless I, I unless I know the person that's competing, I'm just like, oh. well, I mean, I think it's great. Obviously, they opened the window because let's be real, not everybody can. They don't have the genetics to be a bodybuilder. Mm-hmm. Like I know a lot of women that would die. To be able to have huge quads sure. and huge back and everything like that. But there's no amount of gear that would ever get them there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, it's great to have other classes that I, they have options. I agree. I, I do yeah. think that it's it, it makes it fun that they've opened up the doors for all people. And it's good for the sport. It's good for business. But can um, I add something? Like with bikini, I feel like they're going down a dark path. Like they're becoming really emaciated. Has anybody else noticed that? I've noticed a lot of amateurs, they're super, super mm. skinny. Yes. And I'm like, I thought we were supposed to be, like, bikini to me, I thought back in the day was, like, a Victoria's Secret model. Well, almost. that's... Like, yeah. that I like to lift. They have some like curves still. Yeah. Like, it freaks me out a little bit. Like, I see these girls, I'm like, honey, when you, like, do your rear pose, like, I could see your uterus because there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing concealing it. And so yeah. it's like, for me... It's be- and and but I mean obviously I have a lot of competitors that are bikini and they kill it. I just think some are getting really extreme. It's getting. A Do you extreme. think that that's because of the way that it's being judged? Yeah. Like they're they're rewarding that. Yeah. Yeah. I do too. Yeah. I'm I, a judge. <laughs> what do you think? And when I judge, I'm they have to look like they work out for me. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have to at least look like you've touched a weight. Well, I like to see the really pretty glute ham tie-ins, like really solid. Obviously, it's not going to be a wellness butt, mm-hmm. but I want it to have a butt. I don't want it to just be like just a crack. What's your take on that class? Another new It's class. completely genetic. Yeah. It, it, like I feel like if you're not Brazilian or somewhere South American, right. 
yeah, you don't really, it's going to be a tough one. Yeah. I, I always kind of wonder, um, you know, how, I guess, cause there's just so many female classes. Like, I mean, they're, I and they're doing the same thing for, I mean, we have three now for men, but like for women, like it just, it just seems like every couple of years they're coming out with mm-hmm. another way for people to get pro cards. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, like, what do you ladies think about so I think, especially with that one, they're going to go through the same... Six. There's six now for women, right? Damn. Because you got bikini, fitness, figure, figure oh, I guess wellness, we physique, and, now mm-hmm. and bodybuilding. Right. Damn. It's yeah. a lot of trophies. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just kind of wonder, like, do the ladies like that? Like, do they like the... Like, like oh, I didn't do good here, so I'll try this. Well, and that's oh, I didn't what's do happening. Good here, I'll try that. I, I actually see there's a lot of, like, women that were in women's physique, and they're like, eh... You know, I just want, I just want to work out my upper body. Um, I could never get away. Like my upper body is like there to stay. It's like, yeah, I could just bend over and hope for the best, but you know, like my upper body would still be there. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a lot of girls that if they have the ability to atrophy their upper body, I just don't, I honestly, I don't like being incomplete. I don't all like right. just focusing. I'm just going to do glutes and hamstrings and quads all the time. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for the, the like power lifter dad bod. Class and then maybe I'll come <laughs> in it in yeah, it's one minute. Totally. Yeah. Hairy, bald. Yeah. Like no Beautiful. tan, nothing. Yeah. Just go for it. Fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so do you guys want to get into the question part? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we have a couple different classes of uh questions here. We got some of the some more serious ones and then we got some fun ones that we'll kind of save. <laughs> Um, we kind of started getting into some of the um, the uh, serious training. The bodybuilding. Though, yeah, kind of mm-hmm. like the people wanted to know your take on the Olympia. Yeah. Um, obviously, we're super stoked about that. We're so stoked. Um, where in the heck? I need a fanny pack, bro. Yeah, you're rocking. I know. I like, I, anyway. I'm so jelly right now. Like, I'm like, damn, I need a fanny pack. I actually just got a new one, too. This is like, how many do you have, and do you color yeah. coordinate? Like, uh, is... No, I just kind of go until one. Like, I, like, you like just, this you one know. I saw in the store the other day, I was like, I got to get that one. Okay, and yeah. And I switched all my shit to it. And... Like, I feel like that's, yeah, and I'm in agreement. Like, it really, I need a fanny pack. Because I like my other one, but it's too floppy. <laughs> so, okay, so we're functionally, like, going for, like, how yeah. firm and floppy. This one's nice and tight and compact and... You like keep yeah. snacks in there? Yeah, no. what do you keep in your fanny pack? That should be a whole podcast. What is man? Maybe we can do it another time. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Let's do another podcast. Some gummy bears. Yeah. The first uh, question that we have is from Irish Fam Health. Mm-hmm. Um, what so. nutrition strategy strategies have you found successful with clients and yourself transitioning out of a show and into an off season, mm-hmm. especially when hunger signals have been disrupted from dieting? So that um, we, you were kind of talking about you're you're actually doing that right now. Yeah. So that's that's kind of a good. So I think we can all agree as competitors, and we probably all fucked this up at one point or another because of. Being like, oh shit, I can eat. Yeah. Like, I think all of us have done that as competitors, and it's and then you feel like shit, mm-hmm. and you have like twenty pounds of water retention, and it's awesome and edema. So the importance of reversing is so huge. And like for me, because I'm so like with carbs, I just I can't process them very well. So like for instance, what Shelby's doing with me, I don't even have carbs yet. I just have more fats in my diet with my protein. Um, and then he'll probably, like, he's going to let me enjoy some Thanksgiving stuff. The fuck is going on? I know. I'm so, sorry, like. But this thing <laughs> on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure this out. I'm so distracted right yeah, now. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, it's actually, this is more entertaining <laughs> to yeah, watch. Yeah, do not cut this out. <laughs> yeah, just keep this We'll come going. back to our guests. Yeah, listen, I'm not even like, important right now. All of a sudden, I just felt like it hit my chest. And I was like, oh, was, and it was just, like, starting to fall. Yeah, it wasn't good. That's so I, think we're good. I think we're better now. I yeah. feel like... Okay. All right. <laughs> Continue. Back to you, Heather. Yeah, and all right. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. So anyways, um, yeah, reversing is so important. And like when you're coming out of competition, obviously you're very depleted, very restricted. Um, so hydrating again, obviously getting your electrolyte balance back in store, and then slowly incorporating, depending on what your diet consists of, if you even have, like if you're me and you don't have carbs... That's going to be something that you introduce very slowly so that your body actually can utilize them right. effectively. Um, but like, so for my clients, usually uh, they'll, after their show, I'll let them enjoy 
some food, and then we get right back on plan and slowly incorporating more food so their body kind of adjusts. Yeah, how, really do you, how do you think? What do you think, Tim? Like, are you... So, Summer, to answer your question, we're competitive as a competitor. When we come out of a show, we call it a rebound also for us that want to grow muscle. So mm-hmm. we want to ride out that insulin sensitivity for as long as you can. Because if you start picking out like a fat ass, you're going to lose that insulin sensitivity, mm-hmm. which insulin sensitivity shuttles nutrients, all your food to the muscle. And when you're really lean like that coming out of a show, you are highly insulin sensitive. Mm-hmm. Everything you eat gives you a raging pump and it's grow time. And you want to ride that out for as long as you can. You don't want to get too fat too quick so that you can have a good rebound and grow out of that show. If you just come straight eating out of the show, you can destroy that, get the body fat up fast and shorten that rebound window. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely a balance of like definitely taking in more, but like also... For men and women, totally different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally strategic. Yeah, nutrient timing, eating the... When you are eating it, Using it for a workout and mm-hmm. post workout when mm-hmm. it's gonna go to the muscle. So when Not your show, it. so when your show is done, don't stop working with your coach. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Stay oh, with it's your coach. So important. Yeah. yeah. Stay with your coach for a couple more months. Really mm-hmm. utilize that. And that the other thing, that's just because you're so lean that your metabolism is through the roof that you are a furnace. So you mm-hmm. want to keep eating. You want to be hungry. You want to, hunger. Hunger is good. That means your metabolism is fast and you're processing food. And the mm-hmm. more food you process, the more you grow. So the hunger is great. You want to keep that. You just don't want to fill the hunger with bad food mm-hmm. right. and then lose the hunger. Right. So maintaining discipline there at the, after your show is really important. And I actually have to add to this. So I'm hypokalemic, so I'm chronically low potassium. So um, after I compete and I'm, I'm completely dehydrated and everything, you know, from water depletion, um, my potassium like tanks. And so if you incorporate insulin right away, insulin drops your potassium even lower um, so I've actually wound up in the hospital because of it, because um, potassium is what makes our heart work. So, um, yeah. So you take it through in the show. So I have to be really careful, and I actually, that's part of the reason, even if my coach says, hey, you can have a, a meal, I'll still stick to, like, steak and something really conservative, because if I incor- if I take in a lot of insulin, it's just going to tank my... Oh, so you need more nutrient dense food mm-hmm. and things like that. Yeah. yeah. I have to be so careful, so careful. Um <laughs> Yeah, I've I've wound up in the hospital a couple times. It's not pleasant. All right, spin off question. Yeah. With that one, I want to hear everybody's record for most weight gained in shortest period of time. Oh fuck. Twenty I'll, pounds. Twenty pounds in what? Three days. God damn. <laughs> I got you beat though. I'll show you. That's gonna be funny. <laughs> if you guys don't beat me, I'm gonna call yeah, you all bitches. Come so <laughs> on. I'm pretty sure mine was that Emerald Cup when I got low, and I think I had thirty pounds after that. In a week. Which one? Oh, the you one that, a week. What, are you talking about the like the Shortest first Emerald Cup you did when you when yeah. you scraped in to do the lightweight class? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, thirty pounds in a week. Yeah. What about you? I think it was about thirty pounds after my last show. Oh, I remember we were talking about it. Maybe it was more because I was like, Oh, what you the did, f- yeah. You went crazy. Yeah. Dude, your fucking ankles were free. Yeah, <laughs> my, my, my Holy was shit. Yeah, that was I remember so... we talked about it, I was like, this isn't good. Yeah. <laughs> and you I feel my, bad. My socks, like, I would take them off and, like, my leg would be like this from where the sock was. You have a rubber band mark. was like this. Dude, it <laughs> yeah. was freaky. It was that was I remember, like, I touched my shit. And, be, and like, it would just yeah, dent. It was like, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. It's really bad. That was. That's right. I forgot about that. What about you? So when I did the junior class... At the Emerald Cup, I had cut like twenty pounds the last week, so I went from two twenty five to two hundred five when I when I did the Emerald Cup, and I had gained after that. Because, so, all in all, from my stage weight, I gained fifty pounds in three days. Oh my god! And but there was really like, what was that like? It was like thirty pounds more than like what I was pre depletion. But yeah, fifty, pff, dude. I was hurting. I bet you felt bad. It was terrible. And I was super scared. I was young, you know, and I was taking, like, a lot of heavy diuretics and stuff to, like, because I thought more was better. So that's why I stripped so much water. But, yeah, dude, that that was super scary. And I definitely had done some stupid things after that, but nothing compared to that. That was was the worst. Well, and that's that's the big takeaway. Like, stay with your coach. Absolutely. Because reversing is so important. Enjoy a meal. Ah. Ah. Mm -hmm. Ah Ah meal. meal. Mm -hmm. Ah dessert. Yeah. Yeah. 
and oh. for you a banana split. <laughs> I don't even potassium. get that. <laughs> no, I like I take my potassium pills, my electrolytes. A banana yeah. split. Yeah. <laughs> a banana split. God. Banana foster, a banana bananas, so yeah. it's actually it's really banana scary <laughs> with my with my um, hypokalemia because I have a really rare form of it that causes muscle paralysis. So I'm not even shitting you. Like my limbs stop working. So like I fell. And I couldn't push myself off the ground. Like it was like my, li- and obviously your heart's a muscle. So if your muscles are starting to fail mm-hmm. you, it's going to work its way to your heart. So oh my God. super scary. So moral of the story, kids, don't try to do it yourself. Don't be stupid. Mm-hmm. Don't be stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Next question. Your favorite bodybuilder or competitor past or present? Or both. Or I'll both. do both. Okay. Um, Linda Murray, for sure. Like, and it's partly because her structure, her flow, her musculature, so pretty. And her contribution to the oh, sport that we do. Not only that, but she's just a great human being. Like, so she's, she's one that works with wings of strength. And I, the first time I met her, I was going to like pee myself. Like, she's so amazing and she's so down to earth. That's another thing that's really cool about female bodybuilders. There's not the cattiness, like, and the ego. Like, when I was like doing all these different shows with wings of strength, and running the bo- the booths and everything, like Hella's coming up to you, Margie, all these, and they're you're fucking like, oh my god, dude, yeah. and they're just cool. <clears throat> they're just so cool. I remember Sheila when I she was like one of the first like real competitors that we all kind of like were around and um, mm-hmm. or like high level competitor, and she always used to talk about all like all the girls that she was competing with back then and how mm-hmm. they would all like you know meet up and it was kind of like every time they were competing in a show it was like their reunion yeah. and I was like that's pretty cool and it's like, the same yeah. it's the same now like that's part of the reason like a lot of the women's physique girls will be like man I want to be a female bodybuilder because you guys are just cool as shit yeah I'm like I know right yeah they definitely too bad I, you're not big enough they definitely have a different mindset like it doesn't seem as insecure or as much ego maybe in that I class. think we're all we've all been through it like it's like we're kind of the different girls we're the more extreme that we have like you have to be confident in who you are right. to like rock what you got and so that and you, you give it up to the other ones that are doing it too it's like mm-hmm. that makes know. sense how about you Tim what's your my favorite all-time bodybuilder is Kevin LeBron Kevin really LeBron? yeah what yeah. what why is that because he trained hardcore that dude lifted heavy ass weights but he still had the great shape. Mm-hmm. I would say Ronnie just because I love his freak his factor. Just lifting heavy shit. Yeah. But I like LeBron's physique better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go with LeBron. Money? I think mine's Ronnie for sure just because the fact that he was just, he really is the goat. Mm-hmm. You look at oh, it, yeah. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. But what's funny, I think you can pick different Ronnies to like. I like the late 90s, like 98. I would, 98, I would have to agree. Mm-hmm. Ronnie, because like when he got in the early 2000s, his abs started to split. And yeah. just, I mean, yeah. it's fun that like he was just fucking massive. Just but mm-hmm. like yeah. when it comes to like look, like, pr- like aesthetic wise, that was the best. Probably the 98, 97 Ronnie was mm-hmm. the best bodybuilder of all time. Yeah. yeah. Um, but also, I just love the way he trains and. Oh just yeah. Like, yeah, iconic. Like, anyway, baby. Yeah, any, any, <laughs> anytime you you need to get up and get your shit together like mm-hmm. that, he's he's definitely yeah. a person to watch. Mm-hmm. Who's it's, your favorite? Oh, yeah. My favorite. I'm I'm a. Uh, I'm kind of like biased to like hometown people, and like I really like get inspired by people that we. That can rep. see, mm-hmm. I guess you know. Like, I mean, it's I, it's fun to follow people on Instagram, and like the person that I. Um, grew up like idolizing was um, or not grew up but grew up in the sport idolizing was Aaron Madron mm-hmm. and I just I love that dude's physique and the fact that he was uh, from Oregon mm-hmm. he was kind of like the OG of like freak bodybuilding in Oregon mm-hmm. so I'll always like I'll always be um, kind of biased when it comes to that not that I say I think he has the best physique of all time but he's just the guy that like to mm-hmm. me like inspired yeah. um, inspired me when I was competing he made you realize that it can be done. It can not, yeah, you don't area. have to live in Venice, yeah. California. You don't have to live yeah. in yeah. New York. Yeah. yeah, and and I mean it's it's a, such a different game nowadays. Um, you know, people are you know making their name all over because of social media. But mm-hmm. um, back then, it was really inspiring to see this dude and make a name it. out of out of I've Eugene, only Oregon. That they trained insane. Yep. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but they trained hardcore, so we need to get mm-hmm. him on here. And yeah, that'd be fun. That whole Eugene day. crew down there, I used to. Um, I used to like just love hearing stories, you know, with Pax and Brad and Bo, and, yeah. um, and they they had like a nice squad down there. That was, and they were just 
just OGs in mm-hmm. Oregon. I love it. Um, so um, training style, like how do you – give me some of your um, – my splits and stuff. Yeah, like, you know, how, how do you train, you know, your rep schemes? Like, do you... Yeah. What kind of, you know, are you a fan of compound lifts and that kind yeah. of thing? So I think in this, I, I really think this is another good topic that we need to talk about is the importance of your off season and establishing, like, part of the reason you compete, because this is kind of a never ending journey, like you're always going to get better. And part of it is analyzing your weaknesses. So after I diet down, obviously I can't say compete because I didn't compete this season, but after I diet down, then I kind of look at where I need to bring up and then I kind of navigate my training split for the off season according to that. Mm -hmm. So I think like my back has always been something people don't agree with me. They're like, oh no, your back's great and blah, blah, blah. But I also think as a bodybuilder, that's like one area we're always like, oh, I need a bigger back or I need a thicker back. Yeah, your back can never, you never be have too, too big. It can back. never be never too big. To right. It's the same thing with your sweep, right? So, cause it's the X frame. So mm-hmm. I'm always trying to improve my back. So I have two back days. I usually isolate width and then thickness. So, and then I do two leg days, but that also changes depending on off season and my prep. Cause Sometimes I'll just do one leg day. I don't really need to do two leg days. My legs are pretty decent. Um, And then shoulders, another one I like to really, really hit hard because, again, it's kind of the structure. Um, So right now my split is I do chest, universal chest day, and then I do my back, my my width day. I do legs. I do um, shoulders, although I did shoulders tonight because I'm just trying to hurry. And then Friday I do arms, and then Saturday I'll do legs again. You trade six days a week. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So what um, do you kind of um, tend to stick to a lot of free weights or machines yeah. or both or all like of you it. know what do you have like a like kind of like a rule mm-hmm. of thumb that you do like warm up on machines. I think all of us kind of like have a tendency to like for instance if I'm doing leg day leg extensions leg curls warm it up and everything and then you go to compound movements and isolating more with free weights and machines Monty you probably don't really have to warm up do you you're pretty uh, he's, he, Monty's really young We're, yeah I think older. I get away with like being I, able to just, just like jump, jump into squats and lightly squat until you get heavier. But yeah. you should warm <laughs> up. Should, yeah. You should. I, mean, I do. I, do so, yeah, I was I like, know. you will pay for it later. I, I make sure that I at least have a sweat going. Yeah. So that's how old like, are you? 27. I just oh, turned 27 okay. last month. But, uh, You're so cute. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, as a young guy, like I definitely can get away with like not doing... Right. Like the old man warm like Oh, <laughs> like, like, oh. Like, <laughs> like, like, When I lift with Tim, I'm like, oh fuck, can we just get into it? <laughs> but yeah. we're gonna do some ballistic stretching now. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, definitely warm ups important, and like, especially if you have something that like is kind of bummed, like yeah. uh, mm-hmm. you got a bum hamstring or something. You definitely mm-hmm. right. need to make sure yeah. that you're warming that shit up. Well, you train like a fucking beast too, dude. So like, yeah. it it is imperative. Yeah. And, well, and if you don't now, you will later. Preventative <laughs> preventative work yeah. too. Deep yeah. tissue God, cupping. Know. So I'm 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 catching that you're not doing that now. Uh, yeah. I mean. That's a yeah, no. That's a no. <laughs> yeah. No, I try. It's just, it's tough with like time. Yeah. That's, especially when you have a career. Yeah. yeah. No, I, and I get that. Yeah. That's one thing. Yeah, that's the hard thing. That's one thing I would, if there's anything, any piece of wisdom. And I've actually stayed really healthy my entire career, even playing college ball and powerlifting and everything. Haven't had any serious injuries or anything like that, but. That's awesome. Thanks. Um, preventative. Mm-hmm. You have to do deep tissue adjustments. I mean, go as far as grass and cupping, anything, then stretching. Who all stretches here? I do. I have to. I have to to foam roll and I have to stretch. I stretch the part I'm training. Yeah. Okay, that's a step in the right direction, Tim. Like, I have to. Like, (laughs) I have to do do my hips. I have massages, though. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I have a friend that uh, does my massages. That's really so important. I have an osteopath that I love. Mm -hmm. uh, She's a shit. And she has a lot of, like. What's her name? Uh, Doctor Works is her name. Where she work at? Restoration Osteopathic in Vancouver. But she's the shit. Mm-hmm. Do you know her? No, I just uh, like how he's like, where? Where can yeah. I find her? Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And she's for awesome. other people like, to yeah. know too. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. No, that's and yeah, that's one thing about our sport is it is intense, and if you want longevity in it, God, also you should, 
get a career so that you get benefits like health insurance. Totally. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a big thing that That's nobody realizes, perk. especially when they're younger. Mm-hmm. Like, God, having good insurance. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I've had like three or four operations since I've gotten my career and like, Oh, it's so important. So important. Yeah. Yeah, Being, that's part of the reason, like all the perks with being in medical, but that was a big one for me, Mm -hmm. you know, having kids and I was like, "Mm -hmm, I need to have amazing insurance. So I have two questions to stem off of that. What's your, what's your favorite exercise? (laughs) We have to break it down a little bit more than that. Like, nope. If you had one, one lift, one lift, deadlifts. Deadlifts, hundred percent. Yeah, girl. yeah. yeah <laughs> I think deadlifts. that's the like if you're gonna pick one to do forever. It does. It's because you multi muscle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. absolutely hundred percent deadlift. Okay, uh, that brings me to my next one. So you said you kind of did some power. Did you ever compete in powerlifting? No. Okay. What um, What are your best one rep maxes on your bench squat and deadlift? So because you're a four, fucking beast. Four oh five okay. for my squat, and I did. I can't remember deads. It was like four something because this was in college. Mm-hmm. And I, I honestly have not pushed me. You've seen me lift. Like I can lift pretty crazy, but I'm, I've tempered myself a lot. Like I've tried. I Sometimes the ego gets the better of me. I can bench press 225 for like three to four. So yeah. I've never maxed out on bench. Mm. So. I would be terrified to see if you took six months to just power lift like what you could do. Oh, shit. At yeah. some point, I'm begging you, please. Mm-hmm. Do a power lift. Well, I remember, so years ago, he trained me. Like, there's a couple sessions he trained me. He was like, like, I feel weird right now because you're, like, lifting a lot. Yeah. And, like, this is weird. It is. It is. It's not typical that. (laughs) Yeah. Anybody like is, isn't isn't fearful of getting under some weights when you haven't trained them before. It's so fun. And so I love lifting heavy, but. I'm not going to lie. It's a little scary, too. I mean, yeah. I think that's part of the fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the adrenaline rush. This could kill me. This could crush me. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's get into the fun question. So what in the hell is that? That's Julie. Garage? Julie's mm-hmm. home. The garage. Is Julie was... <laughs> oh, I was like, dude, that is so... Like, I was like, is <laughs> one of our mics not plugged funny, in? One of the podcasts I was listening, I think you could hear an airplane like oh, fly yeah. overhead. It was real bad. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is that noise as I'm like watching the podcast but yeah I was like oh yeah we're by the airport (laughs) so today we had um, a lot of really fun um, questions that you know I get a lot of really interesting questions these are actually these are tame these are really tame sometimes not so much yeah maybe we can get into some of the not tame stuff because that's always fun too (laughs) Um, so first question um, since you are currently single what's the worst pickup line that someone has said to you so, and I, I, I got to say this because I actually, because I mean, I get some filthy ones like through DMs that I don't even, those aren't even worth it. But this old guy, and I, 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 I hope and I aspire when I'm older that I don't give a fuck and I will say whatever I want to whoever I want when I'm older. And I'll be a sassy motherfucker because this dude was just straight watching me and like staring at my ass while I was doing lunges, not working out, just sitting there. And he walked up to me afterwards, and you know, they have no bubble, older people, so he just walked up to my face, and he was just like, I just want to take your ass, and I want to bronze it, and I want to <laughs> stick it on my mantle. And I was like, oh, wow. I can't even be mad, man. Like, you had some balls coming up. I was like, all right. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, it. I don't think I would ever say that to somebody. No, he was uh, like he was like 80. He had nothing to lose. I would maybe say it to you guys about somebody, but I don't think I would have the balls to actually <laughs> No, go. he was legit, like, right there, like, having his moment. Do you get a lot of people approaching you in the gym like that? Not approaching me in the gym. They owe it. They're, most people, it's really weird. I'm, like, the biggest teddy bear, and people are like, oh, God, I was so afraid to come talk to you. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like in a corporate gym setting, especially when I used to work mm-hmm. at the corporate gym, I was extremely approachable but i'm i'm so glad that we have our gym now where people just kind of like they tend to it, it, it's, uh, I, don't, I don't okay i wouldn't say that they they don't socially interact because we definitely get that still but like people they're, are just, they, they're better about reading it if i have mm-hmm. a fuck off look on my face they fuck off mm-hmm. like they don't they don't approach you like if like people pick up those social cues a little well, bit people better. are o'malley's too they're kind of focusing upon themselves and yeah like, yeah I feel like at corporate gyms, you get a lot of people who are there to fuck off. Right. And, and, and like, I understand. Oh, yeah, and it's it's kind of like you kind of have to like understand that like like what we do isn't typical. So if you're if you're yeah. doing something that's standing out, whether it be lifting a lot of weight or looking like a freak, like 
a lot of these people are just kind of getting into it and they, you know, they have questions. I was kind of the same way when I remember I used to, you know, bug Sheila and Shane and Ricky Collins and stuff like that. And, you know, asking questions cause you're interested and you're serious about it. But then, you know, I knew I was serious about it, but you also get a lot of people that just are just fascinated. Mm-hmm. Ask holes. Yes. And mm-hmm. people want to ask questions and that and ask hole is a person who comes and asks you a question. And then does the complete opposite. Yeah. Oh, uh, I do yeah. have, I do have, I do have some fun things. So in corporate gyms, this reminded me because I, I did have people that gave zero fucks, and I was actually doing like posterior flies. I was bent over, and had my headphones in and everything, and a guy actually popped his head under me. I'm bent Shut over. The fuck he's like, hey, up. and he's like, <laughs> in the middle of my set. Oh hell. And no. he's like, how much do you weigh? <laughs> I was like, wow. And then I, I told wait. him. He had to know right then. I told him, and then he yelled it across the gym to his wife. She's one sixty seven, Marge. I was like, "Oh my god, this is happening!" What a jackass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next question. Um, if you were married before, do you see yourself getting married again? You haven't been married before, right? Yeah. You have. Yeah. Oh, if you were married before, do you see yourself getting married again, or are you done? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh God! Like okay, so it just ha- it it would have to be something very magical. I'll just put it that way. Like it, it's not like to me marriage. Do we get to your age yet? I don't know. I'm thirty seven. Thirty seven. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I just I mean I I don't necessarily need to be married to like be with somebody. So right. yeah. If that's, if that's that fit, then... Yeah, I mean honestly, it, it would just have to be the right fit. Right. So, but it's not something that you're like. I'm so not like. Oh my god! I need to it. find myself a husband right now. Yeah, well, I think it helps having like a career too, where you don't have to rely on somebody else too. No, I I li- and I'm not that type of person anyways. Mm-hmm. Like, or so I'm like, I'm good being by myself because it's a lot of work being in a relationship. I mean, especially with a bodybuilder. Oh my god! <laughs> but the thing is too, it's like oh, I can't see myself not being with a bodybuilder unless I'm just with somebody that's like overly supportive, like that just is like my number one fan. But even then, and we'll get into, like, my type or whatever, because I know that was a question, too. But yeah, that's the next question. Yeah, why don't we... Let's just go into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's your ideal height, body type, and look in a man? What's your preference? They want specifics. Yeah, they're... Yeah. I know. I'm not this, kidding. This is... <laughs> the, these people are... They're interesting. I know. <laughs> I told you. I think, we, like, have, yeah. I think we have some candidates out there. <laughs> I did not put out applications for a boyfriend, but... Um, so this kind of goes into what I was saying. I can never see myself. I've dated non bodybuilders, um, but it's weird because, like for instance, I do have like a fifty pound weight requirement that you have to be above me, um, only for the fact that I don't want to feel like I have to protect us if we get jumped. Right. Like I really don't want to feel like that. Like I don't want to feel like I'm the. All right. Well, let's let's thin the herd a little bit. So what is your weight right now? One seventy. One seventy. So okay. So if you were two twenty or below. <laughs> Get, get the, the fucking work. You better start eating. <laughs> get to yeah, fucking work, dude. He just killed himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 220. Oh, no. And, like, height-wise, height-wise, um, taller than me, which doesn't say a lot. I'm only 5'2 and a half. So you're good. Pretty solid. Yeah, if they're 50 pounds heavier than you, they're probably going to be taller than yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. So I just, like, that's just rule of thumb because I also, I lift a lot for my weight, like, pound for pound. So I want you to be able to do the same. Like, I don't want to feel like I have to hold back. Like, I want somebody that's, like, doing it. So yeah, it's sense. just the lifestyle. Um, and if you click below um, our YouTube uh, page, there will be a link for applications to be had. <laughs> <laughs> Serious applications only. Serious yeah. applications. Okay. Don't, at 220, we've already, we've we've already, already set a, yeah, a, a standard this here. This is where we're at. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Heather, what's your ideal getaway place that you've never gone to but always wanted to? Iceland. Iceland. Oh, that's a yeah. good one. That's or a good one Ireland. Too. I've always Ireland, wanted to go. Fuck yeah. yeah, I always wanted to go to Ireland too. Yeah. What about you? I always want to go see I want to go to Rome and see the Colosseum. Oh, oh yeah. that would be dope. Uh, for me. Something good, come on. I know. So I've been to Hawaii, so I like the tropical thing, but something different would be I think I'd like to either go to England or Germany because like that's where my family's from. Yeah. Culture. Like yeah, like mm-hmm. my grandparents. Are straight from Germany, mm-hmm. and so it'd be pretty cool to like see where oh, yeah. that comes from. And then also like my, I'm a direct descendant of Oliver Cromwell. Who's oh like, my gosh! Like a kind of big deal. In yeah. Him, so I'd like to like go see something of that. You right. definitely need to. You have to. 
Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, we've already that's done. Even though like the weather and shit is shitty, yeah. Here. <laughs> but it'd be kind of it's cool the same in Ireland out. too. Yeah. But it's green and pretty, so why not? We're used to that. Mm-hmm. Right. All right. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? Teleport. I'd really like to teleport just Why? for time management purposes. Fuck yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one that nobody ever brings up. It's but think about it. You yeah. imagine how badass that would be? Like, ooh, you know, I'm here. Would it be oh, better man. to be able to fly like Superman, though? Because then you could also fly. That's true, dude. Yeah, good that's point. That's one thing. I mean, because then I say, like, oh, it'd be great to have, like, super <laughs> strength. Debate. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. Yeah, flying would be pretty badass. Dude, I thought like super strength would be. But mine. we're already but pretty that, strong, though. Now that you say that, I'm like, dude, you you know how successful you could be if you could take out like all the drive time oh, and. Fuck. Oh, know. dude! Like all the time extra, management. I mean, I probably spend three hours a day in a car. Yeah. Like, and mm-hmm. and that's not even as bad as some people. Like, mm-hmm. if I had an extra three hours in my day, extra rest, mm-hmm. my brain's working better. Oh yeah. Be well, because I cover all of Oregon and Washington, so I do a lot of car driving. Oh yeah. I have a lot of driving. So. Oh, you'd hit so many more clients. Oh my god, I'd be amazing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but flying would be pretty cool too. Except, like, what if it's raining? Thunderstorms. Yeah, my hair it all fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Tim, what about you? I would pick time travel. Time travel. Then I go back and play some bets, and I wouldn't pick up that mattress that fucked up my arm. <laughs> <laughs> you go back to your, yourself and be like, "No, don't do it." <laughs> I put a little on Microsoft. Yeah. yeah. What about you? Oh, I just really like the flying aspect. Yeah. yeah. As long as it's like quick, like Superman. Because, mm-hmm. yeah. like you're saying, if it's really like if, you if you're just like fast, cruising, yeah. Like, yeah. It, it just, it be make sure you're being specific. Like, when, so you're like not like just like poking along. Make sure it's like yeah. legit. Yeah, yeah. I think either teleportation or the ability to read uh, minds that would be. Ooh, Ooh but would you want to? I, you know what? That's a that's a good point too. I yeah. don't know. Sometimes that that mystery is just. Is, Sometimes is it's kind better of, not knowing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm going to go with your teleportation. Yeah. I'm going to... It's a really good one you. that nobody ever I know. Like, really brings yeah, I, I, I do things like that. that. I'm pretty fun like that. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, okay. Well, last one. Nope. Just kidding. Not last one. Um, worst puke story from lifting. <laughs> Have you ever puked? Oh, yeah. I had a girl. Um, okay, <laughs> so this one was actually really... This was when the three male bodybuilders that got me into to lifting in the beginning of bodybuilding... I'd never lifted like a bodybuilder and they were like high volume, very concentrated, pre-fatiguing, like everything was like crazy. And I was trying to be a badass and we were doing legs and we were doing leg press and walking lunges in between. And I was doing my walking lunges and I was trying to hold it in and like my puke started coming out my nose. Oh my and God. <laughs> it was like, cause I was trying, I was like, oh yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. it was oh just, like, my God. Yeah. So that was like probably the worst, but I've had a few Gnarly. really bad ones. What, I don't know what's a common theme? This on is becoming episode. a theme on our. <laughs> yeah, we, we yeah. talk about puking a lot. Yeah, you're kind of not it, hardcore unless you. It kind of comes down. Yeah, you, I mean, I think ever anybody who's trained really, really hard has done it at least once, mm-hmm. or weekly for you. <laughs> it was bad there for a bit. Yeah, you peaked last week, right? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. There's yeah. stains all around the the building. The back the back side of the building. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Oh, this is a fun question, um, and I guess we could probably all chime in on it because mm-hmm. this is definitely an interesting one. Um, sex life and sex drive during prep. Um, I guess I'm gonna kind of like broaden that, like mm-hmm. as far as like not just during prep, but like in general. Yeah, just like hormonally and all that kind of stuff. Like, so I'm that... a redhead. Enough said about Fuck, that. Fucking Amy. Yeah, that's just where I'm at. Like everybody that knows knows. <laughs> Um, there is no up or down. There is a steady hurricane for me all the time. Right. Well, supposedly you guys are aliens. So. We're mutants, yeah. we actually. Aliens. And we are actually mutants. I'm not kidding. So, yeah, for me, it just is. It's just all the time. All the time. Like rrr, prep, prep doesn't matter. No. On, I mean, the thing is, the off. only thing that matters is towards the end when I'm like right before a show, as long as you're going to do the heavy lifting, I'm fine. I I'm just it. saying. Does, how about you, Tim? Does your sex drive like go up and down to... Well, Depending. when the estrogen gets squashed, yeah, it's yeah. no longer. Yeah. Boys, I feel like boys are more, I can't call you boys, I feel like men are more susceptible to this than yeah. women. Right. When yeah. you get incredibly lean and the estrogen is squashed, it's yeah. like, you're, like, you're like, wait a minute, I haven't thought about yeah. something in a week or so. That's yeah. so strange. Like, I get hella grumpy, too. Like, if, <laughs> if 
Yeah. Yeah. I th- yeah, I think, like, uh, especially during prep in the last, like, few weeks, like, as a guy, you don't want to fucking do anything. Yeah. Like, I, I know my password's just, like, <laughs> especially the last two weeks, you're just, like, I don't even... Want you just wait. want to cuddle? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just need like, to fucking yeah. be held. Just yeah. hold me and tell me that I'm gonna I'm not gonna die right now. I think it also depends on like I don't know, cycling and things like that too. Yeah. And when it comes to sex drive and mm-hmm. yeah. talking, really. Yeah. At that point. Like, yeah. Mm-mm. I think um like in, in my past, there's been two time two different preps where I was like really like sexually active or like really wanting it the whole time and I got my ass whooped at those shows so that just told me that I wasn't really You're like yeah, I, I, I wasn't I, where you I You weren't suffering enough. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't I wasn't there yet, but um I think a big part of it too is like how you um for me anyways like how you emotionally connect with a partner and like mm-hmm. where you're at in your relationship like cuz sometimes um like I've had a lot of preps that that kind of affected how my relationship was going. Maybe it was their first prep with me. They didn't really know mm-hmm. what to expect. So the relationship's kind of taking a dive too, but I've also had, um, you know, you know, if you're like, a, you know, a fairly emotionally connected person with your partner, then I think that that can yeah. kind of carry some of that a yeah. little bit further. You can kind of, you're more likely to dig a little deeper for somebody that you're like, that you care about <laughs> or that you're, that you know, sense. that, you know, I think that that kind of mm-hmm. tends to have effect. On I it. think thinking of a, a story, uh, Let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> when I prepped for uh, Pacific Coast, I think. I was in I remember house. that show. Yeah, I was in my mm-hmm. house. And I remember my mom called me, but I think she picked up the phone. And uh, my mom said something like, Monty must be really fun right now. <laughs> and she's like, nope, not at all. <laughs> and like, my mom was inferring like sex and things like that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, my mom and I were close. Yeah. yeah. I have the same type of relationship yeah. with my mom. Yeah. Yep. I don't. Know. Not at all. My mom is not like that. Yeah. I was definitely like raised in a house where like you talked about things and mm. like you weren't, like we didn't like hide. Yeah. I talk like, like that, that with my kids. My kids are really cool like that. That's good. You should. Yeah. I, I, I think like if you make it like this big taboo thing and oh, like, yeah. I mean, I don't have children, but I could, I just, I, I felt like that was, like, a good thing for me when I was growing up, was having, like, a completely, like, open book. I feel I like saying, yeah. it opens the door to be, like, honest with, mm-hmm. Absolutely. like, an honest relationship. Fuck it's yeah. Like, mm-hmm. You don't want to be friends with your kids, but you want to be able to talk about things, especially... They need to trust you. Like yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, well, there's a lot of education that comes with sex. Mm-hmm. And everything needs to be... And, responsi- and, like, yeah. understanding responsibility. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally. I agree. Well, that concluded our, our question part of it. Um mm-hmm. Is there anything else that you guys want to touch on? We will never be monetized by YouTube now. <laughs> no, no. That's all I'm saying. We have to get segment. on. Yeah, <laughs> that's why we got to get on like other platforms like Spotify and mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, well, I guess that concludes O'Malley's Gym Podcast number three. Thank you, guys. Yeah, that was a lot of fun, Heather. We'll definitely yeah. have to have you back again. Yeah, yeah. Heather, a follow on Instagram. Yeah. Watch your career. Yeah, it's lots of fun. Absolutely. We'll have to do it again. Yeah. You're a fun host. That was a fun Yeah, that was really fun. Cool. I'm a fun person, and I really am kind of outspoken. Now you need to do the three claps. Oh.